Hello, my name is David Andalfaro. I'm with the Research Division here at the St. Louis Fed, and we're at our first annual St. Louis Advances in Research Conference held this spring uh, in 2016. And I'm here uh, this afternoon with Ufuk Achit of the University of Chicago, who uh, spoke earlier today uh, on a paper that was titled, Lack of Selection and Limits to Delegation, Firm Dynamics in Developing Economies. Thank you very much for being here, Ufuk. Thanks for having me. So why don't you begin by telling us a little bit about your paper, what it's about. Sure. So I'm a macroeconomist. I'm interested in uh, cross-country differences at the macro level. Why are some countries are richer than others? But I believe in order to understand these aggregates, it's important to understand first at the micro level, firm level, why firms are different and how things are aggregating up and, and generating the macro differences. So therefore, in this paper, we start with some cross-country uh, observations at the firm level. Uh, for instance, when you look at the firm level data in developing countries versus developed countries, you see massive differences. For instance, in developed economies, firms face a lot of competition. When a cohort is born, many of them are exiting within the first couple of years, but the ones that are surviving are growing very rapidly, and they are taking over the cohort or the economy, the successful ones. And this creates, this is what we call the creative distraction aspect of the, uh, of the economy. And this competition generates a, a very healthy selection, meaning that the economy is self-selecting the successful firms, which later on grow and absorb the, the, the resources in the economy by generating jobs and, and creating employment. Whereas when we turn to the develop, developing economies, like the, the, today I talked about India, for instance, the picture is completely different. When we look at the life cycle of, of firms, many firms are entering as small firms and they linger around for very, very long. Why? Because they don't face competition. They are not being kicked out. When they don't face competition, they are not being kicked out. They manage to survive. So then the question here is, why don't they face competition? Why do the firms that are supposed to grow are not growing and, and taking over the economy? And this is the question that we are asking and trying to understand. Okay, so uh, and what do you find? Like, so you, you bring some theory to bear on, on this question, or is it directly evident from the, the data that you, you look at? Excellent question. So uh, I try to bring both of them together because both theory and data are, are giving us different power and, uh, uh, and different margins to, to answer these, these questions. So first, when I build a model, I start from the micro data, and first I try to understand the, some uh, stylized facts so that we can discipline the model accordingly. And so we, we use micro-level data from Indian economy and we document a number of interesting facts. For instance, one of the, one of the interesting findings which Nick Bloom uh, and his co-authors also showed earlier is in India, one of the best predictors of firm size is the size of the family, or to be more precise, is the number of male children, for instance. And so India shows uh, quite heterogeneity also across its states. There are 29 states and they all have, of course, uh, different strength of institutions. And we are using indices for different regions in terms of how much do people trust on legal environment, how much do people trust on police force, etc. And this way we create an, a, a trust index across regions. And what we show is that this positive correlation between family size and firm size is a lot weaker in high trust regions compared to low trust regions. Another interesting fact is that firm growth is declining in firm size, meaning that small firms grow faster on average than large firms. But this negative relationship is, again, much weaker in high trust regions. And what we, when we dig deeper into the data, what we, what we see is that indeed firms are facing some additional frictions as they are growing. And after doing this uh, analysis, what we find out is that indeed uh, one of the major problems in India is the lack of trust. So if firms want to grow, for instance, a firm owner, in order to grow its, uh, his company, he has to open a second shop or, or second store, which means that he has to give the, store, the, the, the key of the storage room to a manager who is not uh, part of the potentially family. And as a result, if there's a threat that this manager suddenly empties the storage room and disappears in the economy, there is no way you can find and, and, and punish this manager because India is a gigantic economy and institutions are unfortunately relatively weak. So as a result, this creates a hold-up problem, and firm owners anticipating this danger, they don't invest and they don't try to expand. So this is, this is some reduced form facts that we find uh, from the data, and then motivated by these facts, we build a theoretical model because ultimately you want to, uh, you want to ask the following question. 
Are these frictions quantitatively big? Should we care as macroeconomists for these uh, differences? Maybe this is a nice story for some of the firms, but when you aggregate things up, maybe at the macro level they are not important. So for this, we need to build, we need to rely on theory. We need to build a general equilibrium model where our firms in the theory mimic exactly the US firms versus Indian firms. And then we need to do some counterfactual exercises. Once we build the model and once we build the theory, then this gives us a lab where we can do some interesting lab experiments. For instance, if the US firms were to face exactly the same institutional structures that the Indian firms face, how would their life cycle be different? Or how much less would they invest in expansion? How much less or more, I, I don't want to take any stand, of course, mm -hmm. in ex ante, how much less selection would we observe in, in the US economy? So for this, we rely on theory. So this, this issue of, of trust is critical. Yeah. I think uh, authors like Fukuyama have written on this as well, about the importance of trust, not just in the, the present context, in terms of delegating, I suppose, managerial uh, talent uh, across various establishments. In India, you said that the primary determinant of firm size is the number of male children. Yep. That seems very clear how far the, the trust network extends. In the United States, it's different. I mean, evidently, we're uh, able to trust a wider network of people. But is there something fundamental? Uh, is there something that policy could change along this dimension? I mean, you can't just go to India and say, hey, why don't you start trusting people a little more like the way they do in the United <laughs> States? I mean, what, what, what sort of policy implications follow? Absolutely. So, of course, there are multiple, uh, multiple frictions uh, that prevents firms from growing. Trust is, is uh, one of the ingredients, of course. Uh, in our analysis, our analysis uh, is broader than what we have uh, talked about so far. We also incorporate the human capital differences across countries. Uh, for instance, if the managers are not bringing much good to the firm, Forget about all the other uh, parts, like the legal parts, but if the managers are not uh, educated or their human capital is not as comparable to the U.S. counterparts, again, everything else equal, Indian owners will not delegate because they have less incentive, for instance. So mm -hmm. as a result, uh, so one of the clearly, one of the, one of the first steps that we try to understand in, in, the, in the project is what are these institutional ingredients here? And we show that indeed uh, the weakness of the rule of law is part of the story, but even more so is the human capital differences across countries. That's, that's also important. Um, so when it comes to the policy aspect, of course there are some very easy or quick uh, uh, pr uh, predictions like fixing the human capital, for instance, or fixing the, the judicial system. But I think the main takeaway from this analysis is something else. So when it comes to understanding these developing countries, the differences between developed economies and developing economies, typically we think about the microcredits, like, uh, the, you know, normally there are lots of entrepreneurs there who have great ideas. The only thing they are lacking is the money, mm -hmm. and that's why we have to bring money to those mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. That's been typically, or there are, for instance, some size-dependent distortions. For instance, it could be very detrimental to have some additional regulations, which kicks in, for instance, India, when you have 50 employees or 100 employees, there are different regulations that are kicking in that you have to obey. Mm. And some people have argued that maybe these size-dependent distortions are preventing this. But our finding is saying that these aspects are certainly important. Credit frictions or size-dependent distortions are certainly important. And we do see that these are also important in developed economies as well. But when it comes to in India, there are pecking order of, 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 of things. So unless you fix the problems of, 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 of firms that they are going to face when they become large, even if you provide the necessary means when they are small, they will always face some friction and they will always have this hold up problem when they are growing. So as a result, just fixing the, you know, providing more money or, or uh, uh, you know, removing size dependent distortions will not remove uh, all the problems of the, of the entrepreneurs. More importantly, we have to also focus on this legal environment. They ha there has to be a playground where the entrepreneurs can, without having any fear, invest and collect the returns to their investments. I guess, uh, and conversely, for the policy lessons for an economy like the U.S. is to, to avoid... Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Uh, Indeed, that's, yeah. Absolutely, that's, a, that's an excellent point. Yeah. Indeed, we are showing how much the U.S. economy would have lost or, or right. the firms 
would have lost if they were to face an environment like the Indian economy's face, uh, Indian firm face. And indeed, our analysis suggests that the uh, among, when we look at the observed differences in the life cycle of the firms, 30 to 40 percent of the differences can be attributed to the, the lack of delegation in India, which oh. is a very quantitatively big margin. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Ufuk. That was fascinating stuff. Thank Look you very much. Look forward to reading more a, about it. It was a pleasure. Thank you for thank having you. me.